Well, it's an honor to have Marcus and Joni Lamb with us. They are true pioneers in Christian television, and it's wonderful to have you. And you've got a correction for us. You're now in 100 million homes. Yeah, over 100 million in the United, United States. United States alone. And 700 million worldwide. Wow. So the Lord has been good. So you literally go all the way around the world. Yes. 24 hours a day with Daystar. And that's wonderful. That's wonderful. How, how, did, how did it start? What, where, what, what, was the, what was the first thing that, you know, got you to say, I'm, I need to start a, a Christian television station? In March of 1983, Joni and I had just been married six months. We go to Israel for the first time. Mm. And while we're on the Mount of Olives, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, go to Montgomery, Alabama, and build a Christian TV station. Now, that is an incredible thing, because <laughs> uh, you're standing where the Bible says Jesus is going to come back. Yes. Uh, and he tells you to go to Montgomery, which is a little bit off the beaten track for you, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> you ever been there? Uh, no. At that time, I had <laughs> not been there. But... Uh, and I argued with God. I said, God, why would you ask me to do something other than what I'm already doing? You're blessing what I'm doing. So why would you ask me to do something different? I don't know how to build a Christian TV station. And I don't have a million dollars plus in cash to build a mm -hmm. Christian TV station. He didn't argue with me. He just repeated his assignment. Go and build that station. And what did you say to that? Well, you know, I... I believed that he had heard from the Lord, and even mm. though I didn't understand or have any idea what well, I was embarking upon. What made you upon. think that? Because a lot of people wouldn't understand. <laughs> what made you think he really heard from the Lord? Well, you know, we traveled as young evangelists for a couple of years before we actually moved to Montgomery. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he had been in ministry since he was 15 years of age and went to college at 16, graduated at 19 from Lee University and had, you know, conducted all these revivals. So I had already um, had my worldview expanded from Greenville, South Carolina, where I was born and uh, was able to watch him in services and pray for people and see people saved and filled with the spirit and people healed and miracles and all of that. So I knew that he could hear from the Lord. At that point, I was just the girl who would sing a song in service or pray for people on the altar. I had no intentions whatsoever of being in front of the camera. So I was like, yes, honey, that's great. You go and do that and I'll stand with you and it'll be awesome. But it got tough, didn't it? I mean, you were, uh, the sorry, I heard you were six months pregnant and you're trying to help him run electric lines to run, run a light grid as you're building a studio. You're not even on the air yet. You're trying to get ready because you could lose the license if yes. you don't start broadcasting. So here you are in the heat of the summer. Yes. Uh, and you're running electric lines. Did that promise to God, use me whatever, come back to you? <laughs> it did. <laughs> it did. I think that has come back so many times in my life because if God showed us everything that he wanted to do with our lives as it relates to our total surrender, we'd mm -hmm. probably run the other direction. But that's the thing about God. When you're, you're in his will and you're in his purpose, um, you, you have a peace about it. And so with that, even though we didn't know what we were doing and no, you can't go to school to learn how to build a Christian television station. We no. did start out with the black and white transmitter and cameras that came over on Noah's Ark that looked like boat anchors. And we had all these volunteers and it really was a very, very small beginning. But um, yeah, I remember that day I was, I was probably about six and a half months pregnant and we needed uh, to lift the ceiling because, you know, with television, your lighting grid needs to be up. And this was a lower yeah. ceiling. And so we didn't have any you don't money. You the cameras to see the lights. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So we didn't have anyone to, to really help us with that. Uh, we had a mm -hmm. few volunteers, and his dad was going to be coming to help us as well. So he gets up on scaffolding, and I'm pushing him around in this hot building. And I, it's and, a double-decker set of scaffolding. And he's afraid of heights. So and there was I mean, no was air conditioning comical. in that room. Right. Yeah. And Joni's pushing me. And you yeah. learn the heat rises. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. It's hotter at the top of the room than it is. At you the know, bottom. it's almost, it, you know, I look around today at our studio and see what all God has done. And it just makes me appreciate so much more what yes. we have today, because Amen. we know what it's like to start with nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just amazing to see what God has done. Those 
Those early days were very important, though. I think um, it was important that we walk through Montgomery, that we lived there for seven years. I don't think we would have been prepared to go to Dallas and eventually build a network had we not been there first. Well, it's almost like God wants to start very small. He wants to have, everything's a small seed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then he says, okay, just trust me. If, yeah. if you had known what you were doing, if you had known what it took to do television, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would you have started? Probably not. Because <laughs> I would have known it's bigger than us. You would have known but, it's impossible. But I think, Gordon, you're, you're such a good point. God wants us to be totally dependent on Him. Yes. And He wants to get all of the glory mm -hmm. for whatever yeah. is accomplished. So true. Right now, looking at what you're doing now, um, do, you, do you still see it that you're totally dependent on Him? I, I know I do. So many times I drive up on the grounds and I see all of it. And I, more than most people, know what it took. And I just think, God, you did this. And I'm so grateful that you allow us to be a part of it. Yes, I am so totally <laughs> dependent upon the Lord. And I mean, more so today than ever before, because I know that um, it's the Spirit of God that can speak through me to encourage someone who's listening, to give hope, to say the right word. Um, you know, and if I try to do that in and of myself, I'm going to fall flat on my face. But, you know, it's, it's the Spirit of God that is going to reach out and touch people who are watching. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, it's just such a great honor and privilege. But I, I could not do it without Him being with me. I, I, tell, I know you feel the same. I, I tell people here, here at CBN, it's, it's the same as when we were in the tiny station on Spratly Street in Portsmouth, Virginia, where we literally prayed in every camera, we prayed wow. in every light bulb, uh, and prayed in every yeah. payroll. It's the same. It's just the zeros have changed. Yes. Uh, and, and now I, I just sense God's challenging us to, can, can we take it to yet another level? And all the things that he's built, it's, it's all in preparation for us to say, oh, yes, God, let's take it to this next level. How do we reach the world today? Because mm -hmm. uh, that's our call, and I know it's your call, too. You got your call on the Mount of Olives, and it's all about can we prepare the world for his yes. coming? Can we hasten the coming of, of the king? And yes. that only happens when every nation, every tribe, every tongue Amen. hears the good news. And what he's given us in these platforms is yeah. absolutely incredible. Uh, it is. And it's a great privilege to preach the gospel. It really is. I Here's a I'm... neat little <laughs> short story. Uh, about a year ago, an email came from a young lady in Tehran, Iran. Mm. And she said, Dear Marcus and Joni, I watch Daystar often. I'm not a Christian. I'm a Muslim. And I want to buy a DVD of one of the programs that Joni had done because I want to share it with my fellow university students here in Tehran. And Gordon, it just so overwhelmed me to think that Muslims in, our, in Iran are watching and they're even wanting to give money to share the gospel, even though they're not yet Christians. So Jesus is up to something. And I believe that there's a, a spirit of acceleration because the coming of the Lord is so near. Yeah, I just really feel it in my spirit. We, we, we have to really put it in gear. Uh, and and you, you look back on the amount of work and, you know, when, when do we get a day of rest? And, but no, it's, it's time to really press in. And yes. the, the spirit is calling us to, to do that. Uh, well, anyway, it's an honor and privilege to have. We're out of time. I can talk to you for about <laughs> a full half hour. But anyway, uh, if you want more, uh, they are going to be with us for our week of prayer. And you can watch that on CBN.com. You can also watch them on the Marcus and Joni show on Daystar. All you have to do is check your local listings for times or go to Daystar.com.